So last week I uploaded this piece of animation right here on my Instagram as a small collaboration between me and another Vietnamese local artist. Uh, his name is Thai Ling and he's got this pretty unique style of drawing that I really adore and you know make sure you check him out on his Instagram and his website uh, link in the description below yeah and it's a complete joy and honor to be able to work with him and I think he's pretty much thinking the same as me of me as well Hello Hiếu Vũ ơi, anh có một ước mơ đấy là được collab với em với cả tiện thể em cho anh vay 50 luôn nhá so in today's video, I'm going to focus on breaking down one of the aspects that I spend most of my time with uh, while doing this project, uh, which is uh, figuring out how can I animate the eye element inside of his uh, illustration. And so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so right now, as you can see, this is what I got when I try to import all of his uh, illustration into uh, Adobe After Effects and as you can see all of them are in uh, uh, Photoshop uh, layers because apparently the uh, support to convert from Procreate into Adobe Illustrator files are still somewhat limited so this is what I had to work with and obviously the body parts contains a lot of uh, details around them it wouldn't make sense to me for me to illustrate them just uh, to animate them using just you know maybe distortion or something like that my, th my thinking back then was like uh, if I was already gonna plan to animate all the components inside the eye I might as well you know just recreate everything in After Effects using shape layers so that's what we're gonna do today uh, so today I'm gonna show you guys how uh, we can recreate this eye over here in After Effects and also retain some of the details around them and also be able to animate the eyelid as well so I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this layer over here pop this one out here as a reference just gonna drop down the opacity a little bit so that we can just barely see what's going on in the background and while in the foreground we're gonna have something over here to compare our progress with all right so we're gonna start out with a basic uh, shape layer the white part of the eye that's gonna be the basis of our uh, uh, eye structure so I'm gonna draw around that using the pen tool this is one right here uh, do it a little bit around the eye I'm gonna just gotta have one point over here that's gonna be a much better way to handle the eye to animate the eye sorry yeah like so good enough I'm gonna take this uh, bright uh, white color over here in the background I'm gonna call this one I owe one and as you can see as well, there's like a sort of thick stroke surrounding the uh, eyes a little bit in every single one of the details. Uh, obviously, we can just enable the stroke option right here, but uh, what I tend to do is just duplicate this layer, uh, disable the fill uh, on it, and then add a stroke to the top of it and that way you know if we add more details into the eye we can make sure that all those details lies underneath the stroke and not in between it and the fill change the uh, size of the stroke a little bit maybe uh, maybe make it a 10 or a 6 a 7 yeah make sure the stroke uh, has a round cap like um a round join sorry yeah that's more accurate round join and then we're gonna move on to some more intricate details like the stroke around here I'm gonna add just add a, a solid a white solid in the background make sure it brightens everything up so that I, that I can see more of the details over here right so now i'm gonna duplicate this high layer the one that uh, that's containing a stroke duplicate that and then I'm gonna expand the overall mass of the shape uh, going in here to the shape click on add and offset path then drag up the amount of the offset and as you can see the stroke is already is already growing around but still sticking to the overall uh, lining of the shape and sort of uh, expanding the shape and as the effect is expanding the shape it's also expanding 
how the stroke is looking. And I'm gonna add another effect on it. Uh, it's called Trim Path. And then I'm gonna drag in the trimming a little bit, drag in the end uh, property over here. And then also I'm gonna drag up the start property until it lines up with the uh, shadow that we have over here. The sort the sort of stroke on the details we got over here. Uh, in the inside of the stroke, I'm gonna enable the taper option, start length, uh, drag it up to maybe 40%, and also 40% down here at the end length. Yeah, and we can also do the same uh, for the one underneath as well. Copy the uh, eye layer. You can do it in one layer or one single layer. Just copy the shape. I myself, I prefer to have a bunch of layers for each of the details. So I have more control over where the details is going and how the details gonna look like. Drag up that duplicate of the shadow of the eyelid, and then in the offset path. No, wait, in the trim path, sorry, yeah. Drag up the offset until it lands over here on this side. Uh, we got this eye detail over here pretty much covered. And I think the tapering is a little, little bit less, wow. It's a little bit less extreme on both ends. I'm gonna drag that back to maybe about 15%, yeah. 15 looks good, like so. For the next step, we're gonna come down to these two strokes around here. Um, maybe the, there are some sort of highlights around the eye, and we're gonna, oh, this one, oh yeah, the one on the top, yeah. Should color it something else, orange, and uh, I'm gonna take the one on top, duplicate it, uh, call it eye high light. I'm gonna color it the, color the same color in the, uh, in the artwork. Oh, that's that's actually kind of hard to see out, but I'll try. Uh, go into the eye highlight in the offset path. Gonna reduce the amount of the offset a little bit until it just slightly reach that point uh, in the in the original stroke, so you can see a little bit more. Gonna drag up the color. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna increase the size of the stroke highlight, maybe to about 12, and reduce the tapering on both ends, yeah. Do, 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 like so. And this one as well, like that. And also, you know, drag down the trim path to, to where it is down here. There we go. Also, as you may have noticed, the uh, the stroke over here is a little bit uh, distorted, almost as if it has its own sort of a wiggle transformation distortion in there. So we're gonna do exactly just that. We're gonna add in a wiggle path option over here in the shape, and I'm gonna reduce the size just about two, and details down a little bit more maybe three and put it the points option from corner to smooth uh, track up the correlation between these uh, this distortion there we go so we get a little bit less randomness inside the distortion I can't believe it's already been 15 minutes of footage um, yeah I'm gonna speed this up real quick I'm gonna duplicate the shape uh, in the highlight over here uh, and then you know offset the trimming uh, to underneath down here like so yeah that's good enough the wiggle uh, the wiggle can stay the same you know although i think the wiggle uh, down this part is a little bit less extreme so i'm gonna uh, adjust the wiggle a little bit no, actually maybe drag dragging it up actually makes it look a lot better size and correlation can still stay the same pretty much i think i'm gonna jump back into the wiggle and the first one i think because the the first one has a little bit of a little bit of crest over here that I want to emulate and drag up the correlation like so and make sure the eye highlight is underneath both of the eyeshadows there we go that's uh, much better if you're wondering by the way it's seven and three next we're gonna tackle the eyeshadows over here on the eyelids and I don't think we're gonna get something close to uh, this sort of thing when it's touching uh, either either ends like this so we're gonna to 
just go with like a basic idea of what this uh, shadows over here look like so we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this stroke over here copy that bring it uh, below I'm just gonna drag up the thickness of the stroke to maybe like 20 and then in here I'm gonna drag down the opacity to about 30% like so and then uh, in the transform module of the shape uh, inside within the shape itself I'm gonna uh, disable the link between the scale and bring down the size of the stroke like so just you know slightly until it, you know, the shape touches most of uh, what we have inside the shape right here and then we're gonna use the trim path to separate the part in the middle over here that's the part where uh, most of the eyeshadow is actually touching the eyelid on top uh, so we're gonna drag it down to about 43% over here on the end and at the start uh, make it uh, 9% gonna see if I can actually make it touch the shadow a little bit more uh, that's pretty that's actually pretty close I'm gonna arrive at that this point right here the same goes with the uh, shadow at the, at the bottom uh, duplicate this shadow over here offset the uh, offset the trimming so that it stays down here at the bottom and we're gonna also transform the shape uh, once again so that the shadow stay underneath of the of the stroke. Yeah, and you know, as always, we can uh, also play around with the position of the shadows a little bit, like so, just to give us a little bit of flexibility. I think that's most of the details on the outside of the eye pretty much done. Uh, finally, we're gonna come down to you know how we can animate all of these paths together. Uh, so you might be aware that uh, since the beginning of this video, I did not touch uh, the path of any of this uh, details of the eye at all and that, that's what we're gonna utilize in order to easier animate the shape of the eye so over here I'm gonna highlight uh, all of these uh, details of the eyes that has uh, pretty much the same path I'm gonna type in search for path right here and for every single one of these details the, the details of the eyes I'm gonna connect those paths to the path of the original eye that we had that as the original handle of the eye and we're gonna animate from this path right here so I'm gonna drag this path connected to that path all of these paths are the same they're pretty much the same so it's okay to uh, drag those paths into the original path Uh, once we're done with that, as you can see, uh, all of these paths right here are now containing within them an expression that connects them to the uh, first original path. So now we can actually take this handle over here and move it around like this. Boom, and now the entire eye, including all of its, uh, all of its outside details, are gonna be moving with the first uh, with the first layer of the eye, with the first original path of the eye. And when you're trying to move it around, you know, using only one single mask or one single path, for example, a lot of stuff is gonna jump around. A lot of details are gonna jump around based on how there are based on how the property or the details that are being adjusted inside of them for instance the stroke right here inside are jumping around so you know it's something that you need to uh, pay attention to maybe in this uh, in this one single moment right here you can just keyframe the uh, shadowy part of the eye the trimming of the shadow part of the eye down a little bit so that it fits in with the entire shape that's basically how I rigged the eye inside of this artwork. It's pretty. It's actually a pretty good exercise, really, uh, to look at into more ways that we can uh, implement stuff uh, within After Effects itself without having to, you know, uh, extract stuff from the source material. I've been using After Effects for way too long, and I feel more comfortable just animate 
uh, straight and well uh, make sure you guys check out the full artwork down below I'm gonna put a link there and yeah um, thank you guys so much for watching I hope it's been useful in some way I think you guys know a little bit into how I think when I work in After Effects and yeah catch you all later